In this video, we will talk about the block Comattone. This block is made of ramp earth plus a small quantity of concrete, which makes it more resistant to mechanical stress, to harsh weather conditions, and it makes it more long lasting. The block Comattone is 28 centimeter long, 14 centimeter wide, and 9.5 centimeter high. It has two interlocks in the upper part, a male on the side uh, for about one third of the block's width and a female on the other side. Then if we turn it upside down, we see two hollows on the bottom. These shapes have position in the blocks in a precise manner, making it easier to build walls, corners, pillars and any other elements of the building. Indeed, in order to build a building with these blocks, a dedicated project is needed. The dimension of the building to be built will be have to be calculated in such a way that they are a multiple of block size. The block of Mattone was originally designed by Professor Roberto Mattone, who was Professor and Architecture of Polytechnic of Torino and who prematurely died. His wife, Professor Gloria Pazero, decided to continue the development of the Blocco Mattone. She has been carrying on this project mainly in the developing countries where the Blocco Mattone represents an easy and cheap method of construction. Moreover, the use of Blocco Mattone helps decreasing the impact construction has on the environment because it avoids the deforestation associated with brick production, since firewood is used for grazing bricks. In order to obtain this block, perfectly dry soil is needed. Moreover, the soil must be sieved in order to remove any organic material, roots, stones, gravel, and so on. A little amount of cement should be mixed with the earth. The quantity of cement may vary between 6 and 12 percent. Then some water should be added little by little until the mixture reaches the optimal consistency. The mixture will then be compressed use the the, using the machine. Today we will talk about how to prepare the machine, how to use it, how to properly take care of it in terms of maintenance. This is the machine used to prepare the blocco mattone. This press was entirely redesigned with the collaboration of professors Squaglia, Franco and Ferrar Resi from the Polytechnico of Torino and senior engineer Matteo Assegiano. This is how the press will look like when you will receive it, as for shipping reasons, the package is kept as small as possible. First of all, you'll have to set up the lever arm and this is easily done by screwing in the screw. Thanks to a lock present here, we can, uh, the lever can also be used to move the machine around the construction site. Second, you'll have to put in place the dosing box this is easily done in this way. As last, in order to use the machine, you'll have to open this lateral leg, as you can see here, and secure it with, with a pin. Now that the machine is ready to be used, let's have a look at its components. Here we have a sturdy, very sturdy rectangular frame. This frame supports a chrome steel column, quite similar to the shaft of hydraulic cylinders found in diggers and caterpillars. On this column, there are two sliding mechanical systems. Both of them slide on bronze bushings which are protected by special seals. In the upper part, we can see a more complex solution 
composed by an iron ring that supports a stainless steel spring and then a special bronze bushing. This spring supports the weight of the mold's lateral walls and makes it easier inserting the mold into the ceiling at the beginning of the operations. The mold is a floating mold. What does this mean? If we compress the soil from one side only, which indeed would be easier, we would risk to obtain a block that is very well compressed on one side and less compressed on the other side. So this is the reason why this specific type of mold moves up during soil compaction, allowing uniform soil compression on both sides. When the cam goes up, the vertical walls of the mold fit into the ceiling of the mold. And then, now it does not go up anymore because there is no soil inside. But when it is filled with soil, the friction will make it go up a few centimeters so to obtain a perfectly uniform compression on both sides. Here we see two cams. One is for block compression and one is for, for block ejection. So the machine works in two positions. This is the position for compressing the blocks where the cam works raising up the bottom of the mold. The second position is this one that you can see right here, where the second cam allows the ejection of the compressed block. Now, in order to make a block, we need to place in the machine the right amount of mixture. This dosing box has an adjustable floor, so with a few attempts you can find the right amount of mixture needed. You pour the soil mixture in the dosing box, feeding it up to the top, and then quickly overturn it in the mold. Then if you want, you can also use your hands to make sure the mold is properly filled also in the corners. Then you can place the machine in the compression position and push down on the lever arm and all the way down to the bottom. At this point, you pull up the lever arm and move to the ejection position. Pushing the lever arm down again, the block will be ejected. Now that the block is ready, you can lift it gently with both hands and place it on a flat surface. The block will have to remain here for a few days to harden before being stacked somewhere else and then used. Half blocks are often needed. Therefore, the machine comes with two brackets as accessories. This one can be used to create the female half block. In order to do that, you place it on the floor of the mold in this way, then you fill the mold up with the soil mixture as usual. So this part will be destroyed, while this one will be the female half block. If you want to make a male half block, you can use the other bracket, exactly in the same way. A very important aspect is the amount of soil that has to be used to prepare a block. What happens if you put too much or too little soil? If you don't put enough soil in the mold, for example, what happens? Pushing down the lever arm, you'll notice it is too easy reaching the end of the stroke. You will still obtain a block that has the right height, but that has not been compressed enough. So this block cannot be used and will have to be destroyed. If you put too much soil in the mold, it will be very, very hard to push down the lever arm 
probably too, ar- too hard to reach the end of the stroke. Indeed, you can always get to the bottom by jumping on it or by asking help to your friend, but this is absolutely wrong as you'll totally wreck the machine. The machine is able to create a very important force of compression thanks to its cam, up to 80 kN. But pushing too strongly on the lever arm, there's a risk to damage the entire structure of the machine. Therefore, when you notice that you've put too much soil in the mold, it's best to stop pushing, eject the block and destroy it. But what is the right force that should be applied? The ideal force is 300 Newton, which is to say 30 kilos. When you feel that you're applying a force of 30 kilos, that is fine. But indeed, the question is, how can you know that you're applying 30 kilos? The easiest way to learn how does it feel when you're applying a force of 30 kilos is using a weighing scale and pushing on it with your hand as you would do with the lever arm. The machine has some settings. For example, this one for setting the height of a block and the parallelism between the block's base and top. And this one's concerning the column that control the height of the mold during the rotation. However, the manufacturer already takes care of all these settings, so there is no need to modify them. In case of specific needs, before modifying any settings, we recommend contacting the supplier. For the rest, the machine requires only minimum maintenance. Substantially keep it clean. At the end of the working day, clean carefully the most important parts, for example the column, these other zones where the soil may stick on. After cleaning, it is important only the internal part of the mold with a brush. Using waste oil is totally fine, any kind of oil works well. Also, if some parts of the block remain stuck to the mold before preparing the next block, it's important to remove all the residues of the block and oil the mold. Bushing, roller bearings, scams and all these other parts need no maintenance at all. Here we show a portable device that can be used to check the breaking resistance of the block after hardening, which is to say 15 to 20 days since block preparation. This is the time needed for the cement to harden. This very simple device can be brought in the working area. Every day you can take some newly produced blocks, mark them with the date of production and batch number. After 15 to 20 days, it will be possible conducting the test. Blocks breaking occurs by bending. In reality, bending is not the main stress when the blocks are in place in a building. Of course, the main stress is by compression. However, some empirical formulas allow converting the bending resistance into compression resistance and obtaining some good indication on the validity of the block. The block is positioned in the machine exactly how you see it here, upside down, centered between the two lower pipes and the upper pipe. The latter will apply a force right in the middle of the block. These two screws will have to be regulated so that the upper level will be horizontal at the beginning of the test. The lever needs to be parallel to the block, also in this other direction. This ensures that the same force apply on both sides. These settings need to be done only once before using the device for the first time. At this point, you can hang the dynamometer and charge it to apply a force on the block. This force will be multiplied by 10 times, thanks to the lever ratio. Therefore, the force on the block will be 10 times the one measured by the dynamometer, or actually a bit more due to lever's weight. Then, charge the dynamometer up 
to the breaking of the block and read carefully the last value measured just before block breaking. Good values are 10 to 12 kilos and above. If the block is very well done, you can reach the full scale of 25 kilos or even get there without breaking the block. If so, stop. Otherwise, instead of breaking the block, you'll break the dynamometer. Other aspects, such as details upon how to prepare the soil mixture and how to take care of the blocks during hardening, were not described in this video. However, you can find all information in a PDF booklet that can be provided to you when getting the machine. This booklet contains precise guidelines on how to make walls, corners, connection between walls, pillars, and many more information. Music